Right there, hello everyone and welcome back to Klopp Talk TV and it is the on the back of a Leipzig win which takes us through to the last eight of the Champions League. And as you're probably wondering by the title of the video and as all Liverpool fans are probably saying, yeah, we should keep Fabinho in the midfield. Here is why and here is what I want to say to you. But hey, before we start this video, please like and subscribe, turn the post notifications on if you're new here. And yeah, comment down below what you think of the question. Uh, well, it's not really a question. It's a statement why for me Fabinho should stay in the number six position in the midfield as he is commonly known well he is the what the best well a crop said it perfectly he's the best number six in world football you cannot start stake a claim for any other number six in world football against Fabinho he is the best at what he does he is the best in that position and he just showed against Leipzig that he was um just just proved an absolutely phenomenal performance. He hadn't started at uh, the sixth position since October last year. So it's it's a big loss for Liverpool that time. The, the amount of points we've lost since then because he hasn't been in the team out to injury or in the centre-back position. But this is his game in numbers. He had three out of five tackles, which was the second highest in Liverpool. 70% passing. He had 23 out of the 33 passes. 51 touches, four interceptions, one aerial duel, one. He had a clean sheet. And uh, yeah, through to the last eight. And he had man of the match given by UEFA as well. Look, he was a really good player. And now this is why we should keep him in the midfield. Because... Nat Phillips, he is. This is. He also comes into this video. He is an absolute colossus. He was absolutely sensational yesterday. The, 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 I've got stats for him as well, but he was an absolute wall. I swear, if you chucked a brick in the air, he'd try and get his noggin on it to get it away. He is an absolute sensational centre half, and you know all. It, Neutral fans are probably going, oh, Nat Phillips, oh, look at Liverpool fans hyping up another player. He is an absolutely class player. Like, any team in the top six would love to have Nat Phillips or certainly take Nat Phillips in a heartbeat. And to, to know that this guy's going free, there will be a lot of teams chomping at the bit to try and get this man signed up as quick as possible. This, he, this was his game against Leipzig. 57 ball touches, 9 ball recoveries, 5 duels won, 5 clearances and 3 tackles. He was absolutely sensational. In my instant match reaction, I did give him a 10. I did give Fabinho a 7.5, I think. But looking back on some of the stats, now I know we shouldn't really compare stats because... We should really talk about foot performance instead of stats because stats don't really tell the story. But stats don't lie. They're the stats that just backs up my argument and why we should keep Fabinho in that position. Fabinho is the best in what he does. When we face the teams in the European Cup, which you know could likely be anyone, uh, I, honestly... Any team's frightening, you know, no no team is in that Champions League pot for no reason. They're in there because they're good enough and they're in there because they're the best at the last eight teams in Europe. Now, I wouldn't, honestly, I'm really anxious of who we choose. I don't even want Porto because they're a defensively minded team. Uh, we struggled against, against defensively minded teams and look, we should have a bit of positive, we should have a bit of optimism going into these games. But, they're really good. I think they've only conceded two goals before the Juve game, and that was against Man City, who were obviously sensational at this current moment in time. But we have more as much chance as anyone. And, um, yeah, Fabinho should just be played in that position because we look a lot more confident. We're not getting matched in the midfield. And we just look a lot more confident, fluid, and it's liquid football. And it, it brings the best out of Thiago. It brings the best out of Wijnaldum. And can you just see the, the elevation of some of these players when Fabinho's in that midfield? Did you see how good Thiago was yesterday? Did you see how good Wijnaldum was yesterday? Did you see how good the front three were? Yes, they missed their chances. But they, they got two goals. Uh, one from Mane and one from Salah. And they took us through to the, the, the last eight. So... Look, you can you can say all you want that, you know, Nat Phillips is this, Nat Phillips is that. I'd take him over Joel Matip. Joel Matip, he has a better injury record than Joel Matip. I feel like, yeah, Joel Matip is not afraid to take the ball on. He can take it out the line. But this Nat Phillips kid, right, was so close to being signed up by an American university um, before the season to do to do like a scholarship there. So he was so close to signing that. 
who would have thought at that start, at that part of the season we would be seeing him in a Champions League last 16 tie? Now look, nine times out of ten, nine players out of ten, or oh, 99 out of 100 players would have crumbled under that pressure. Nat Phillips has taken that in just just his own stride. He's absolutely made it his own position. And look, having Fabinho in that centre half position, you know why would you bench Nat Phillips at this moment in time? Why would you bench him? You know, maybe you could bench Ozan Kabak, but then you, you're loaning someone out to not play him. You know, you have to play him. He's, he's better than what we have, so you've got to play him. So that is why I believe that Fabinho is good, because he not only solidifies that back four, he brings the best out of Thiago Alcantara. Remember, we have Jordan Henderson to come back into the mixer as well. We have options coming back. It does look promising in the future, and it does look like we can piece something together uh, in this last third of the season and hopefully hopefully fingers crossed toes crossed eyes crossed that we get this champions league hopefully it's a big ask but you know we have as much chance as any team so leave your comments down below who would you t would you keep fabinho in the midfield i'm sure everyone would at this current moment in time and the fact that we bought him for 40 million euros Think of how much he would he would be sold for now. It's it's a remarkable business by not only Liverpool but also Michael Edwards as well. Uh, you know the absolute G. I hope he can sign Kylian Mbappe in the window. But you know, uh, there is some reports that Kylian Mbappe is interested in Liverpool move. Again, some some reports doing the rounds. But this is a this is a video on the Fabinho stuff and the Nat Phillips stuff. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Turn the post notifications on if you're new here. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. It's not hard. Go and hit it, and you will get access to me talking about Liverpool, Premier League, Champions League content, and hopefully not Europe, Europa League football next year. But you know, let's hope, fingers crossed, that we get this Champions League over the belt. But yeah, thank you, teaching every one of you. Hit this video, watch this video, and I'll see you all soon. You'll never walk alone.